If you have been dreaming of having a balcony garden oasis, here are five tips to help you successfully care for plants in containers. Growing joy. Hi, plant friends. I'm Maria, your new best plant friend, and I'm here to help you care for plants successfully, but most importantly, grow joy while doing so. And there is nothing more joyful than sitting on your balcony with a mocktail or a cocktail at dusk enjoying scented herbs blowing in the wind, maybe some cut flowers. I've been balcony gardening for the last four or five years. The first balcony I gardened on was nine square feet in New York City. It was basically this big. Now I am lucky enough to have this epic balcony that's about 150 square feet that I grow most of my fruits and vegetables over the summer. I have learned a lot in these four years, so I wanted to go over my top five tips to help you have a successful first year or maybe second year gardening. Tip number one is going to be to utilize your vertical space. A lot of balconies, you really don't have that much space, right? So use every inch that you have. As you see, I'm using my balcony railing in two different ways. I have these hanging planters that I'm planting on, and I also am actually using it as a trellis. So I have little cucumbers here that will grow and start trellising across the balcony. Also, if you don't have a balcony railing that is slatted like this that you can actually use as a trellis, make sure that you use trellises. So I'm planting way more food in this one container because I have a trellis that the center plant is going to grow up. Then I can utilize the side space so it doesn't like bush out and it actually grows up and you just can get more bang for your buck out of one container. Tip number two, if you're growing in containers, they're going to dry out faster. So you need to understand how you're going to sustain water all of your plants throughout your summer when you have travel involved, right? Who doesn't have a million weddings to attend this summer? So you can do that in a couple of different ways. If you, you can either do self-watering planters. These are self-watering planters. They have a watering reservoir. You fill them up with a hose and then these can go like one or two weeks without having to water the plants over and over and over again. It's great for if you travel. If you're not going to do that, here's a watering hack that I do when I water my grow bags. Grow bags particularly are amazing for containers gardening, but they do dry out faster than any other container out there. Have two watering cans. Usually if you have more than one container, it's helpful to have one watering can that you're watering in. This will fill up in the sink as you're watering, and then you can swap it out. It'll just make watering less time consuming if you have two. Also, these aren't fancy watering cans. I literally bought this at the dollar store a couple of days ago. Tip number three, intensive plant. If you want to grow a kitchen herb garden on your balcony, a lot of people, that's the gateway into gardening. You have a little balcony with a little bit of sun. You want to grow some herbs. There's nothing better than cutting chives and scrambling them into your eggs that day or harvesting fresh cut basil for, you know, a little garnish or making your own pesto with. So if you are going to have a kitchen herb garden, you can plant your herbs pretty close together. It's called intensive planting because you're going to be constantly harvesting from them you're basically pruning the plant on a weekly basis. So you don't need to listen to the guidelines on, on the plant tag. So in this one container, I have oregano, parsley, cilantro, rosemary, thyme, sage, micro dwarf tomatoes. I have lettuces on the outside. I am using every square inch of this planter to get the largest yield of edibles that I can, because when you're on a balcony, you got to make use of your space, right? Number four, be mindful of the varieties that you choose when balcony and container gardening. I have an entire salad worth of food in this one container because I've chosen micro dwarf varieties. When you're at the garden center, it's either going to say dwarf variety, patio variety, or container variety. Those are plants that have been intentionally bred to have be more smaller and compact so you can grow them in small spaces. As an example, this is the Kitchen Minis Red Velvet Micro Dwarf Tomato. It's only going to get like 12 inches tall, maybe this big. I'll get a ton of tomatoes off this plant, but it's just going to be super small. In here, I'm growing a quick snack cucumber. So it's a vine. It's going to climb up the trellis, so it's not going to take up a lot of space. It's going to grow mini cucumbers, right? So these are all mini plants. I have a mini um, bell pepper plant, the Kitchen Minis Fresh Bites Orange Sweet Pepper. And then I also am growing Tom Thumb Lettuce, which is like a more compact lettuce. So I have a ton of plants in here. And the reason why I can plant them all together is because they're all micro dwarf patio over 
varieties. So they're going to take up less space. Also, if you want to grow flowers, you definitely should if you're trying to grow food, right? Because if tomatoes need pollinators to make sure that you get a lot of beautiful fruit. So I have small edible flowers like these violas. Also, if you're looking at the garden center, make sure sometimes if you get a zinnia, for example, there'll be a container zinnia or a patio zinnia, or you can just look at the tag to see how tall the plant gets. If you're trying to grow a flower, I wouldn't grow a flower that gets over like 12 or 16 inches tall. Zinnia is a great example. You can buy a zinnia that can get four feet tall, or you could buy a zinnia that can get 10 inches tall. So read the packet before you buy. This isn't a packet. This is a plant card. And last but not least, mind the shade that your balcony railing or other balconies around you can provide. In my first apartment in New York City, when I had that tiny balcony I mentioned, it was an apartment balcony. There was a balcony on top of us, a balcony below us. So we were actually shaded. Also, understand your exposure. So this balcony, this uh, this is south. The, The sun rises in the east sets in the west. So we get really strong western light. Um, These plants pretty much get direct sunlight for eight hours a day. But if you have a balcony that faces the north, it's going to be a lower light situation, right? So you need to see, do I have unobstructed views of the sun? Or do I have a balcony or another building blocking the sun for my plants? And then also, what is the railing doing to my plants? So if you see this, this is an elevated garden. So it's amazing because this railing is never going to cast shade on this planter. However, my grow bags over here might get some shade because at the point where the sun is over over there, they're going to be in a little bit of a shadow. So be mindful of the exposure of your balcony and then the shade that other elements in your environment might be providing, whether it's a building next to you, whether it's a balcony railing, whether it's balconies above or next to you. Everybody's balcony lighting is definitely a unique snowflake. So you're going to have to do a little bit of sleuthing to make sure that you set yourself up for success. And a general rule of thumb is most edible plants need about six to eight hours of direct sunlight. You can get away if you don't have that much. You can probably try growing lettuces and some tender herbs and be okay. But that's also something a quick Google can answer for you. One bonus tip, enjoy your balcony garden. Sometimes this can get very stressful, right? I'm giving you these tips to set you up for success, but also some of the best lessons you can learn about growing from plants come from plant flails. I always try and grow something I've never grown before every single year to continue expanding my knowledge and enjoy yourself. Enjoy the aromatic herbs that you're growing. Enjoy the beautiful blooms that you're growing. I hope all of these tips help set you up to have a restorative oasis amidst your probably busy urban environment that you're living in and that this summer, whatever you grow, you keep growing joy.